All right, 4.3 binomial distributions. Binomial probability distribution is a distribution with independent trials whose outcomes are either a success or a failure. The random variable is the number of successes in a given number of trials. Probability in a binomial distribution is when the probability of x successes in n identical independent trials is p at x is equal to n choose x times p to the power of x times q to the power of n minus x, where p is the probability of success in an individual trial, and q is equal to 1 minus p, and it's the probability of failure. So each term in the expansion of p plus q to the power of n represents a probability of one possible outcome in the probability distribution. So we're going to see examples of that uh, leading coming up. All right. Expectation for a binomial distribution. Well, the, when determining the expectation for a binomial distribution, you can multiply the number of trials by the probability of success in an individual trial instead of using the standard process. E at x is equal to n times p. Let's look at an example. A card is repeatedly cut from a deck and replaced each time. What is the probability that in 10 tries, an ace is cut once and then three times? So what's the probability that in 10 tries, an ace is cut once and then three times? So Probably the x equals ace, one ace, is now we have 10, choose one, all right, so from the 10, I want one ace. How do we get an ace? Well, how many aces are there in a deck of cards? There's four and 52 aces in a deck of cards. Now, how many of those we want? One of those times nine, choose nine, so 10 choose 1, we have 10 tries. One try will be the probability of aces over the aces times 9 choose 9, which is the failures of the remaining cards in the deck, which is 48 cards in the deck, to the power of 9. The reason it's the power of 9 is because, don't forget, we have 9 possible of probabilities of that value. So 10 choose 1 over f times 4 over 52 to the power of 1 times, well 9 choose 9 folks is just 1. So really it's 48 over 52 to the power of 9. Now here's the explanation. N here is 10 trials. We have N equals 10. X equals 1 ace. P is equal to ace over the number of cards, so the, the P stands for the successes, and the failures is going to be 1 minus the P value. So that's how we got these values here. This is P, this is 1, this is Q right here. Anyways, when you plug this into the calculator, you get these val this value. Now folks, I'd like you to keep the entire decimal, and then when you convert it to a percent you can round it to the fourth decimal place. I'd like you to keep it that way because it makes it more accurate. I know it's a little longer but to me what's important here is the fact that you look at the entire number and understand what you're going to round to after you convert it to a percent. Now let's calculate the probability of getting an ace three times. How are we going to do that? Well 10 choose 3 from 10 cards from 10 trials, we want 3 where we will have a success of 4 over 52 3 times multiplied by the losing part, which is 7 choose 7 times 48 over 52 for the remaining 7 trials. And then when we multiply that, we end up getting a decimal answer. Remember to keep the whole decimal, folks. Change it to a percent and round it to four decimal places. So there's the expectation, sorry, the probability of getting uh, an ace three times in a tri and, and 10 trials, 3.1190%. All right, moving on. 
Example two, a family has six children. Consider a probability distribution for the number of girls in the family. Identify the discrete random variable, calculate the probability distribution, graph the probability distribution, and calculate the expectation and interpret its meaning. So the discrete random variable here is a probability of getting the number of girls. Now calculate the probability distribution, we want to do a chart. So x is the number of girls. So we could have zero girls, one girls, all the way up to six girls because there are six children in the family. Now the probability of getting those girls, well, that will be six choose zero. So six children choose zero girls and you have a half a chance, so 0 0.5 to the power of zero and 0 0.5, so that's girls to the power of zero and boys to the power of six. So the next one is going to be six choose one, so one girl. Well, that will be 0 0.5 to the power of one times 0 0.5 to the power of five. And we do the same for two, three, four, five, and six folks. So again, we're trying to get girls, so that was, so we're winning girls, if you want to say it. Or successes, we're measuring the successes of how many girls we're going to have. Now when you calculate those values, you get certain numbers. And if they're nice fractions, I recommend you use them, but ultimately, what it is is that the bottom number will definitely be 64 okay each time because 64 is the value of uh, 2 to the power of 6 so 2 to the power of 6 is 64 so that's the bottom value and you have a 1 in 64 chance of getting no girls 6 in 64 chance and so on so these are the different values you don't necessarily need to reduce in the probability. I'll accept these unless it's a final statement that you're making for me. The des within the table, I'll accept the answers as they are. When you add them all up, that will give you 64 over 64, which is 1. Now, x times p at x, folks, I really would like you to reduce the fractions for me, please, or give me the decimal value. Okay? So again, reduce the fractions or give me the decimal value. And we calculated all the decimal values. When I added all of those, I got an expectation of 3. What does that 3 mean? Well, the expectation, sorry folks, the expectation means that in this case, this 3 means that on average, uh, a family of six children will have three girls. That's what the expectation value is saying. All right, and I'm assuming that you can all graph this probability, and what you'll notice is that this represents a normal curve. You're going to have quite the normal curve here, but if you look at the at top, the numerator values, they look familiar. Hopefully you're thinking you've seen these before, because reality is you probably have in the Pascal's triangle. So I'm assuming you can graph the probability distribution and we've already calculated the expectation and we've interpreted the meaning to say that on average a family of six children will have three girls. Example three. With a certain set of atmospheric conditions, the probability of rain is 40 percent. During a one month, eight, during one, a one month period, eight days had those conditions. What is the probability that it rained on fewer than six of those days? And then what is the expected number, expected number of rainy days? During one month, eight days had three conditions, those conditions. So we need to be able to answer this. So let's look at the solution and understand why. So we're going to move backwards for a second. We want the probability to be rain for less than six days. What is so what is the probability it rained fewer than six of those days? So how are we going to get that value? Well, it's going to be one minus 
it raining the seventh and eighth day. The reason we're doing one minus the seventh and eighth day is because it's a lot easier than adding all the values. But of course you can add the values if you need to. So one minus eight, choose eight, times 0 0.4, so that's 40% to the power of eight, and 0 0.6 to the power of zero. So that's the failure is 60%. Plus, of the eight days, we choose seven times 0 0.4 to the power of seven, 0 0.6 to the power of one, plus eight choose six, 0 0.4 to the power of six times 0 0.6 to the power of two. And that, folks, will give us our value of this. So what is the probability that it rained on fewer than six of those days? 95.0193%. Now, what is the expected number of rainy days? Well, the expected number of rainy days is there's eight days that had these conditions times 0 0.4, so x times p at x, and that gives you 3.2 days. So on average, on average, um, the expected number of rainy days the, will be 3.2 days. All right, folks, well, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day.